All right, thank you for staying with us. If you are just joining, you're watching Daybreak, reaching you live uh, from the nation's capital. We are now looking at the dailies on Daybreak. We begin uh, with the Daily Trust newspaper, Stella. Yeah, the Daily Trust newspaper. Yes, the major story, the, the Kan uh, Kaduna Abuja rail uh, attack. The major story says, Abuja Kaduna train bombing, nine killed, dozens missing. Survivors recount ordeal with a rider that says, Outrage at medical doctor, MBTE director, others killed. Exam for a deputy governor, others injured, Nigeria mourns. Tenable Council's Colloquium, dam damage worth over 3 billion Amici. That's the Minister of Transport there. The Chief of uh, Army Staff, the Inspector General of Police, both of them have older manholds of terrorists. Uh, on the left, top on the left of the Daily Trust is oil windfall. Algeria pays jobless citizens as Nigeria spends on subsidy. Mm. And, and we have another story there that uh, Buhari watches a super eagle surrender 2022 World Cup ticket to Ghana. While I dump, why I dumped PDP for NNPP, Kwankoso. All right, now let's take a look at some of the stories. Uh, Are you right? I saw quite <laughs> Algeria stories. pays jobless citizens mm -hmm. as Nigeria spends on subsidies. Mm -hmm. I think that's uh, one of the first they in are, Africa. They are an oil producing country just as mm -hmm. we are. Yeah, so experiencing this, boom yes, in exactly. the oil, oil and gas industry. And you know, uh, in Nigeria, despite the rise in petrol in P PMS, in, in crude recently, we, our mini, uh, the minister said that Nigeria should not necessarily expect a boom because we spend so much on subsidy. Of Why course. are we here? I mean, of course. We I mean, should be <laughs> celebrating just like every other country. We should be like Algeria. Mm -hmm. We're paying citizens. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of jobless citizens. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. wish that could happen, really. But uh, unfortunately, uh, these are not the best of times for Nigeria, even though uh, there's this, you know, the, 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 the increase in the price of crude, global crude oil. Uh, is favor in some countries. Nigeria uh, will not be benefiting because it's like uh, it's the same hand that we take out our crude oil, uh, and then you know we do not get return because we have to now refine this crude oil and then pay heavily for that. In fact, uh, government is not subsidizing. We're talking Nigeria. about trillions of naira. Yes, you know uh, refineries are not working, so definitely. We for, cannot for us in Nigeria, when other countries are celebrating the increase in crude, what we do in Nigeria is we're sad. We're like because the more the, the more the prices go up, the more we pay mm -hmm. for to refine these products and bring them into the country. So we're not going to we're not celebrating. But why are we not? We have four refineries in this country, Ayuba. So why? None is working. I mean. Yeah. Should we none be saying that now? Are, should we? Not, is that what we should be talking about now? Unfortunately, you know, it's been years since they stopped working. And, uh, I mean, everyone seems to be talking about Dangote Refinery, Dangote Refinery to come to the rescue now. Uh, but, I mean, what happens to... But, again, if you look at... Even if all the refineries in Nigeria uh, are working, you know, what's the capacity of all the refineries? Ayuba, let them work first. Have? Let you know, them work it's first. Less than a million. No uh, matter less than half a million. Ayuba, Ayuba uh, if they were working, at least the amount of refined product we we'll bring in would not be as much as we're bringing in at this point. Which therefore means that it would just be to substitute whatever it is that we're producing from our refineries. You understand? Yeah. So that would be like support. And if we're doing that, we won't be spending so much on subsidy and we'll be able to celebrate alongside other countries like Algeria when the, cri the price of crude goes up in the international market. Well, unfortunately, we cannot tell that story now. <laughs> we can only hope. Yet a lot of money is spent on maintenance of <laughs> yeah. these refineries every year. Hope, yeah, we can only hope that uh, we have the leaders that will take this, you know, decisive steps and uh, be able to take the bull by the horn because, yeah, part of the problem is that uh, we've not had, you know, people that, uh, you know, that can take the tough decisions, take the tough choices of setting Nigeria straight. Are you, but they, they all make these promises when they come into office. So what happens yeah, to those promises? Unfortunately, when you get to the office, the story is different. This particular administration <laughs> promised us when they came into power that they were going to fix refineries. Now it's seven, almost seven years down the line none of the refineries is working. Yeah, but we have the PIA that have been passed into law anyways. Okay. That's me playing the devil's advocate. <laughs> but, I mean, uh, it will take Nigeria time, and I hope that we do realize how Nigeria is losing out in all of this, because, I mean, we cannot 
be having this? I mean, people talk about the oil boom in the 70s and how that changed a lot of things. Ayuba, Nigeria. if you don't position yourself internally as a country, you cannot take advantage of whatever it is that is coming internationally. That, was, that is exactly what is happening with the crude oil. Because we have not position ourselves, if we had position ourselves, and by position ourselves is making sure that our refineries work, and in fact that we had additional, I expected that by now the four refineries will be working, and we have had, we would have built additional refineries, so that when things like this happen, you know, you don't predict that these things are going to happen, but when they happen, you benefit from them. Yeah. So it's all, it's all about positioning yourself. Yeah, I agree with you totally. And I hope that we'll position ourselves. I hope so too. You know, in I good so. time because it's, 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 it's getting late. When is the next time crude yeah. oil will go up like this? What if it doesn't go up again? It will, it will mean that it's an opportunity loss. That is why every opportunity should be taken very seriously, mm -hmm. you know. I agree totally. And now other stories on the front page of Daily Trust newspaper. I'm seeing the story about the Super Eagles. Uh, yesterday, the match uh, turned out violent at the end of the day. Oh uh, a lot of Nigerians were reacting negatively uh, to what happened there. Now, the story uh, says Buhari watches as Super Eagles surrender 2022 World Cup ticket uh, to Ghana. A lot of Nigerians are sad you know, about this uh, that happened. A lot of people feel that the management of the team is not what it should be and that uh, we can do better with that. And I agree uh, that we can actually do better. But again, I'm more concerned about you know, the behavior of some Nigerians yesterday. No, they, uh, sh they shouldn't uh, have done that. It was, it, 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 was, it was an embarrassment. You know, we had international, we had our friends from Ghana in the country, we had other people watching the match. I know that they were sad and justifiably so. We all expected to go to the World Cup. Nobody knew that our dream was going to be cut short at this point, you know. But I expected them to have comported themselves a bit better. You know, they, they ran into the uh, field and started destroying items. Mm -hmm. Those, that, we're, go we're not going to look for money to fix those items mm -hmm. in a so country so. where, at the time when we're complaining that there's no money you know, and all of that. Mm -hmm. So I, I think what happened after the match is totally condemnable. It shouldn't have happened. It's totally unacceptable. Yeah, it's and unacceptable. And Nigerians shouldn't behave in that manner at all. I mean, uh, and, and, I mean, we always talk about you know, our leaders. We always complain about our leaders. But what about our own role as citizens? You know, it seemed to me like as Nigeria, as a country, we have our problems are, you know, multidimensional. We have a problem uh, on different layers. Now, as Nigerians, you know, we are not, I, I'm not sure if we, are, if we are following right, if we are, you know, holding government to account. Now, even if we are holding government to account yeah. on our own part, are we what holding we ourselves to account? You know, you, know, for Ayuba, some of these you know, Ayuba, that's why some people say you get the kind of leader that you deserve. You understand? If you do not comport yourself properly, if you don't make yourself a good follower, and in any case, it's out of these followers, out of the many Nigerians that are followers now that a leader emerges, right? Mm -hmm. So if out of those people on the pitch that uh, jumped into the uh, field to start destroying things are people that tomorrow want to hold leadership positions. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's absolutely no way you can divorce these two things. If you're a bad follower, you'll be a bad leader. It's, uh, it's as simple as that. Very sad. Now, the pictorial on Daily Trust, you know, also shows uh, the victims yeah. of the uh, Kaduna Abuja some of the victims. Uh, train attack. Yes, yeah, some of the victims, uh, from what we hear, there are about nine people now that have been confirmed dead, and then dozens of others uh, are missing. And then we have uh, uh, survivors uh, recounting the ordeal all on the Daily Trust uh, newspaper. If you pick a copy, you get the details uh, of, of all of that. Now, uh, let's take a look at uh, the leadership newspaper this morning. And on the leadership newspaper this morning, we have the lead story. Uh, still talking about the Kaduna train attack. It says eight bodies recovered, 26 injured, survivors narrate ordeal. Uh, you would also see the pictures there uh, of the, some of the victims there uh, that died in that attack, including uh, a director of NAP uh, Tech uh, yesterday and also the secretary of... Uh, secretary uh, General of TUC. Secretary General of the TUC. Yeah. Uh, and then... Uh, we also have uh, other stories there at the top. You'd see the story about convention. APC has disappointed 
uh, naysayers, and that's according to the President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan. And then at last, Konkoso dumps PDP for NNPC. We wish him good luck with that. Uh, other stories, FG freezes over 30 accounts of illegal loan companies. And then you have NAS transmits uh, constitution amendment bills to state assemblies. Uh, and then governors showcase states' potential at Dubai Investment Summit. Uh, Soludo unveils 20 commissioners des designate. And then the last story there, uh, fans on rampage after Ghana uh, dash Nigeria's hopes of World Cup. So apparently, uh, all the stories that we have today have been swallowed by the Abuja Kaduna uh, train attack. I it, think that will be the case for the rest of the week uh -huh. because, you know, at the moment, a lot of people are still unaccounted for. Uh -huh. So it's um, the more we'll be expecting that there'll be updates. More they should, we expect that the Secretary of Purchase will do a lot to ensure that more people get accounted for, so that at least uh, those who have been abducted, if they can secure their release, it will be a very good thing. And already we are hearing that you know some of the uh, persons that were abducted, uh, their families have been reached out to for ransom. already for ransom, and you know uh, government have said well. The president has given directive. The chief of defense staff has also given directive that you know those that have been abducted should be rescued unconditionally. So we do not know how all of that is going to play out. If we are demanding their release unconditionally, then what are we doing? What what do we have in place to ensure uh, that these people are released unharmed, mm -hmm. you know, and that they are returned back safely uh, to their families? Those are. Uh, issues that we are yet to uh, see and uh, we'll continue to follow up to see how all of that uh, turns out. Well, that's that for the leadership uh, newspaper uh, this morning. All right, now we will now also uh, take a look at other papers. We have uh, the Punch newspaper. Uh, okay, not, uh, not, not are you, yet. I think uh, while we're waiting for the Punch newspaper, Maybe we should just go and take our My Daily Hustle. Yes, all right. Well, that's that for today in history. And now we'll be taking a look at, you know, uh, perspectives on our newspapers. Uh, today we have in the studio the director of News Voice of Nigeria, uh, Ben Chairman, uh, joining us in the studio uh, to give us perspectives on some of the stories on our front pages uh, this morning. Good morning, and thank you for joining us on Daybreak today. My pleasure, as usual. Thank you. Yeah. Well, quite a number of stories, really, uh, on our front pages. But you know, the story about the Abuja Kaduna train attack seemed to have swallowed all the, you know, stories on our newspapers. First, uh, let's get your own reaction uh, on that incident. Honestly, it's unfortunate and uh, uncalled for, either. And uh, you, this is the period you say man's inhumanity to his fellow man. And uh, the attack was well calculated. Uh, they made sure that the spot was not easily accessible. Um, uh, of course, you also look at it. It, it, it fell in, in, around a valley. Left, right, of course, there was a, a, a hill, or there is a hill. Uh, so in terms of even evacuation, trying, uh, trying to save people, it, it, it's just not uh, OK. And again, talking of crisis communication, and uh, who indeed should speak? Is it the Minister of Sport and uh, Transportation? Is it the Kaduna State Government? Is it the, mini, uh, the, 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 the military or security? Uh, so uh, again, that has to be, uh, to be harmonized so that we don't get conflicting um, statements or even uh, figures. Of course, the President has uh, again said, military, go ye, push you. In fact, anybody with AK-47, just do justice. And that justice means it's a controlled item. You don't have to have the AK-47 when you don't have the backing of authority. So such a person should, should go. Uh, again, should we be waiting for the president to start giving us orders again? Because we already know our jobs in terms of security. I mean the security uh, personnel. And while that is going on, the president is calling the service chiefs, come, let's talk. Okay. The president has spoken. Now, you want to move again, the Senate is saying, come, let's talk. OK, they want to move again, House of Reps, come, let's talk, when indeed the problem is somewhere. 
Now that they're saying uh, the, the, the portion, the spoiled portion has to be repaired uh, quickly so that normal service or uh, uh, train uh, will continue, um, it's also expected that the Air Force, at the point who are saying that the Air Force said they had helicopters that always ply Kaduna Abuja uh, 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 rail tracks to ensure these kind of uh, things do not uh, happen. Uh, so we expect the Air Force to, to up their, their, their game. Mm -hmm. And I uh, haven't said so, there's also like the hum humanitarian aspect of it all. People are saying, look, go donate blood. And uh, of course, we need people who will always uh, go to donate blood. There are people who want this blood. If you go to the 44 referral hospital, you go to St. Gerald in, in, in Kaduna. And that's why, in fact, there are some Nigerians uh, who indeed move around donating blood. And uh, I'm not trying to blow my trumpet. Some of us have formed a kind of a, a, a society. When there is a crisis of this nature, we are always ready to donate our uh, blood. I, I, I am sorry that I have to even flank this. Uh, this is my membership. I've donated up to 15 times. And if you go, you see the heroes up to 60 times are people who indeed want to donate their blood for human beings to survive. But again, why should some other human beings be doing this, this, this kind of a thing? So intelligence network too should be on ground. State policing, in terms of community policing, if this were to be, uh, I mean, uh, to, done, uh, to be done, I'm sure that uh, some communities, some villages would have noticed this kind of strange movements and, uh, of course, put some calls through. I do remember that in 1999 to 2000, there was this project they called Rural Telephony. Every local government, there was some equipment so installed up to today, after installation, no commissioning, and they are working for, for other, uh, other uh, telephone uh, service providers. But why not the national one? That one is a national project, but nobody uses it. It is time for the uh, Ministry of uh, Communication uh, to, to, to visit that and ensure that every village is connected so that some of these uh, activities are actually reported to some uh, simple numbers. Hey, you okay. can call them one, two, three, one, two, three, so that people can remember easily. Okay, sir. Um, on the Punch newspaper, the major headline, still on the Abuja Kaduna rail attack, it says, Buhari National Assembly governors demand tough actions as survivors recount ordeal. Now, do you think this demand is going to change anything? Honestly, it's one thing to demand for. But when you listen to these security agencies, they say any single bullet fired is a dollar or dollars gone. Anyone fired. And you can imagine how much of that uh, they, they will need. So they are running short of funds. Let us not pretend over uh, many of these things. We don't manufacture these things. And uh, this crisis, you, everybody is now saying Europe is, 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 is facing all sorts of crises. If food is affected, also some of these things are bound to be affected because uh, we get some of our supplies in some of as, these countries. Aside that, sir, some people have said that there have been so many demands and nothing has come out of these demands. And that they are tired of the demands, that each time these things happen, this is the same thing we hear go and ensure that everybody abducted is uh, rescued, ensure it doesn't happen again. And then it happens again, and then it happens again. So what, what other thing do you think can be done at this point, Honest outside the demand? Yes, honestly, Stella, we just have to support our own armed forces. That is just the truth. Supporting them implies if the president signs that uh, so, so, so equipment, uh, equipment should be bought, I mean, the Ministry of uh, Finance the audit uh, office uh, of the federation audit, uh, auditor general office uh, all the papers we uh, there are times we have to just cut uh, some of these procedures uh, we cut them, them short to ensure that supplies are made uh, because uh, i mean we cannot just be say i demand this go and do this you also look at what really they have i, I mean i've had reasons to interact with some uh, dpos locally they tell you look when some communities call for assistance because look we don't even have full tank of petrol we don't even have i'm talking of the police they don't have full tank of petrol look at their tires they can't do any hot chase of anybody they are not well armed and by the time you're counting 
bullets to give the police. The armed robbers uh, don't count theirs. They have them massively. Uh, so uh, we expect that we should be, the, the, the security authorities should be up there. They should be the aggressors. They should be the determinants of, of, of what is happening and control the situation. And we, the Nigerians, we should not uh, begin to comment or describe our own security operatives as if they are just some social soldier boys some rack tack fellows no we should by way of encouragement that look you can do it you can do it and the national assembly when there is appropriation please let them have this uh, this money uh, at the point in now you know they are too corrupt they are too corrupt i mean that should not hinder us from uh, fighting uh, these people who are making life so unbearable to, to every Nigerian. Now, if we're talking of uh, by air, we've seen that some airlines are now saying we are not yet going to Kaduna. Is it the, 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 the I mean, if we're having this air, I mean, airport being attacked, the railway being attacked, suddenly, just yesterday, they said Kaduna, Abuja Road again being attacked. So there is a serious thing that people should, should be doing as opposed to we demand this, we demand this. Support them by way of equipment. Support them with, uh, with money. And, and that is, is just it. Look at how much people are spending to even buy form to contest as a party official. I mean, we are not here talking of the, the candidates for, for, for a, a political party, just party officials. Look at how much they are, they are spending. Look at when a government official's son is waiting or daughter waiting. See how many rush there are. Uh, uh, government officials, big people rush to donate uh, money yeah. as opposed to donating to the security agencies who indeed are awake so that some of us will, will, will sleep very well. We need to support them. And okay. our defense industry corporation in, in Kaduna honestly should start working. We should t start manufacturing some of these guns, AK-47, the bullets. Uh, what is it that they need to make those things that we cannot have? Okay. We, we should do all of this. Okay, you know, when you listen to someone like the Minister of Transportation who said that, you know, he has raised this alarm before, and if you look at the fact that this is not the first time that we are having this, you know, attack, that this kind of similar attack, we've had a couple of others before now, uh, and then now we are acting all surprised, as if I mean we never saw this coming. Uh, and then if you put that side by side with what the Minister of Transportation is saying as to he's making a request of you know an installation that needed to be done, uh, some kind of digital installation you know, that has not been done that will cost Nigeria about three billion naira. And the fact that he has colleagues who, ha who are, you know, not, you know, uh, giving the needed support. attention, yes, giving, you know, giving him the needed support to make this happen. You know, what does that say about, you know, our approach to things like this in terms of us being proactive and the, and the rest? Yes, to be proactive, there's also what you call collective responsibility. When a decision is taken that, uh, I mean, you take it to Federal Executive Council, everyone supports there, the National Assembly supports there, and of course, the coordinator uh, 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 against the fight, I mean, the fight against uh, terrorism, uh, I mean, is the NSS office. Uh, so this is where also he has to be very, very proactive. I uh, know that uh, a minister will be singing this song to the left, somebody is singing another to the right, opposing him, and at the center, no action is, is being taken. It has to be a collective responsibility. And I am still saying that, look, we need this community policing. We can't do without them. We should be able to, to have informants here and there, and of course, we should have simple numbers that many of these people will, will, will Sherman, understand. Yes, can't Stella. we have informants without them actually being community police? Yes, we can have because, info, informants. Because the reason I say this is because, you know, the issue of polit uh, community policing has been going through a lot of debates and all of that. So if it's not something we can have immediately, can't we have informants? Can't the security, the police, the existing security uh, uh, operatives have informants in these communities? Why we debate on the community police? Because that's a different and long debate on its own, as you're aware. Yes, in terms of uh, information structure, yes, you can have it informally. 
someone uh, hears this and calls a counselor. Counselor is not uh, uh, the issue, he's thinking of uh, calling chairman, should I, or not call a chairman. But when you have a formal structure, uh, Stella, I believe it will work uh, faster. And to do all of that is not, it's not uh, rocket science. We have the, the, the local government chairman working together with the tra traditional institutions within every local government, because every uh, emirate, every, uh, I mean, uh, uh, every uh, local government is under a state and uh, of course the local government you, you also have ways of uh, having providing security because they also have these votes security votes for local government security votes at the state level security vote at the national level so if we have all of this why do we use these security votes to just provide human the humanitarian uh, uh, services uh, they've burned my houses okay how much was that you begin to to pay all of that when indeed you can do deterrence you can do i mean uh, once you have these people you prevent these things from from happening and i am still saying stella that yes let us have a formal structure because if you have a formal structure, someone is accountable to another person who is accountable to another person. So that this fear that some governors will use them to, to, to do uh, suppression of opposition, you just deploy those you feel uh, should, should, should deal with your opposition. No, when you want to do operations, you, of course, you, you, local governments are joining with some elements of a Kaduna, of, sorry, of a, a state, for example. And of course, you have the federal there. They work in tandem. And that, that, that makes it easy uh, so that uh, a state governor does, just, uh, does not just say, this is my own personal state security. It's not a football uh, team. It is about security. And when it comes to security, it, it, it cuts across. It permeates everyone. We don't just say, no, this one is meant for this religion. This one is meant for this tribe. No, it is for everybody. After when the roads are good, we don't look for who, do, uh, who did it. We don't look for who is plying the roads. It's for everybody. Mr. Chema. Some people have said that all those things that you have mentioned, some security operatives have done them. They have inculcated them in their pla plans in tackling this security uh, insecurity that has been with us for a while now. So, so some people are saying there's a need for a total change of strategy. Some, in fact, analysts are saying that there's a need for the security operatives to return to the table and ask themselves, if we have been doing ABC and it's not working, what should we do now? Look at Kaduna. The attacks are ongoing. They are, they've been ongoing for a while now. Zamfara, we can look at other parts of the country. These security operatives have been working yet, yet, it appears that the, the situation is getting worse. Yes, uh, Stella, you see, when you start an operation against dissidents. Sometimes uh, you have Zamfara doing it alone. You have uh, Sokoto doing it alone. Kaduna State via Brunimgwari, you're doing it alone. Via Southern Kaduna, you're doing it alone. You go to Jos Plateau, uh, you're doing it alone. When indeed, if you start it collectively at the same time, you have a kind of a command structure, it, it, it will be easy. Because if you push them away from Zamfara, they enter Niger State. You push them Niger, they enter Kaduna. You push them Kaduna, they enter uh, a Plateau. And around the circle, it becomes a kind of, a, not really a circle show, but they will just be going uh, around that kind of a thing. But if the heat is once, at the same time, of course, there's just nowhere to, to, to run to. And so we expect, yes, if uh, the plans have always not worked, uh, of course, you change tactics. And that's the truth of the matter. Uh, there are things one cannot uh, say live uh, this way, but we interact with many of these security operatives. They speak of their own. Uh, look, it's not as if they cannot face these people. But I tell you that uh, there are instances they are hams uh, hamstrung. Uh, apart from that, financially, I mean, you, you look at, check some of these policemen you see on, uh, uh, doing some, some jobs. Check their boots. They are really not the boots. They buy shoes, black shoes that look like uh, just police uh, boots, and uh, they, they, they just wear. So in terms of their welfare, what happens? You bring a man from Portacourt, he's in Zamfara. He don't know what is happening to his family. He is a man with blood. He's a man with a, a wife. He's a, a, a lady too, a woman, who has a husband, has a family. 
who has to care for some people, people have to also care for her. They have blood too. And so they also need love. They need uh, what we also deserve. All so right. we all have to be together to, to salvage a situation. Okay. All right. Now, before we proceed with, uh, you know, the perspectives on some of these stories, uh, I would like for us to take a look at, you know, these papers uh, before us today. Now, we've taken a, a look at the Daily Trust before and the Leadership newspaper, but we also have the Nation newspaper uh, here that leads also with the story about the Abuja uh, Kaduna train attack. It says eight dead, 41 injured, many still missing in uh, train attack. Uh, we also have uh, the punch that, that, that led with the story Buhari National Assembly governors demand tough actions, survivors recount ordeal. Uh, on the Daily Sun newspaper, the lead story says outrage, tears, trail Kaduna train attack. Uh, you'd see also on the uh, uh, okay on the first news newspaper you have uh, the story talking about Kaduna train explosion, Tinubu Council's 70th uh, birthday uh, bash, and then you also have on the Blueprint newspaper uh, Kaduna Abuja train attack, uh, B O A M D Hassan missing, T U C scribe uh, Kwara chair, six others killed, and 26. Uh, injured, and that's according to the Blueprint newspaper. It has the writers that says, Our sovereignty under threat, let's declare emergency on terrorism. And that's according to National Assembly. Don't allow criminals hold us to ransom, Buhari tells security chiefs. Hunt down terrorists. CO, uh, that's Kwas, uh, orders troops. Uh, you have uh, Kaduna residents urge days of mourning. Uh, Tinubu halts 70th. A birthday celebration. That's uh, all the stories around the issue of the Abuja Kaduna train attack. Virtually every paper is leading with that st story, and rightfully so, is a story at the heartbeat of, you know, virtually everyone in Nigeria. I mean, everyone who is not touched by this attack, then we should, you know, question his, uh, you know, humanity, his psychological <laughs> form, <laughs> exactly. you know, and all of that. So, but there are also uh, other stories. Constitutional review. The National Assembly has transmitted, you know, 44 bills uh, to states. So in line with the issue of what you're talking about, whether state police or community policing, uh, that's also a proposal that has been made but hasn't, uh, you know, pulled through. So maybe that's an opportunity for us now uh, to begin to look at the review of the Constitution in that regard, to be able to allow for, you know, state policing. Because... A lot of people have talked about ungoverned spaces, and which to a large extent is one of the reasons why we are seeing what we are seeing today. Uh, a large number of people with arms move in locations, they move in communities and villages, and they move around freely, so freely, no one is raising alarm, no one is saying anything. For instance, in this issue of this Abuja Kaduna train attack, they, they, from what we heard, they came with about five Sharon buses and then on some uh, motors, uh, on uh, motorbikes as well. So they definitely move through certain communities where there are people there. So if we have some kind of arrangement, uh, maybe uh, as community policing arrangement or uh, state policing, yes, with the issue of community policing, uh, some will say what, with the recently signed uh, police act that was signed in 2020, uh, there is that arrangement for some kind of community policing arrangement, you know. But whether that is eff effective uh, is also uh, another issue to look at here. So, have we taken advantage of these constitutional reviews that we are having to put in place things like the community policing or the state policing thing? Yes. Before I come to that, if you check some of these uh, the, the newspapers, like they said, buy one, I mean, you've read every other thing because the headlines are virtually uh, the same and common. Uh, but having said so, when they said about 970 people were in that train, it's like an aeroplane. The seats were located, I mean, a sign were located. They are numbered. The coaches are numbered. And so we should be able to look at, um, even at the train station, who indeed sat where. Uh, it's easy for us to 
to begin to do some permutation. So, so, so person was in that train. After all, before you bought the train, you have to show that ticket. And sometimes these tickets are shown via your phone. Mm -hmm. And so you should also know that some families were able to, to travel. But again, it's not nice to break the, the, uh, the news just anyhow. You have to have contacts. You call the family. Look, uh, from our records here, so, so, so person boarded this train. Are you in touch with them? Uh, so that is uh, one uh, uh, way of uh, managing this information, not to cause more uh, panic. Now, going back to this constitution review thing, you, you, you see that the National Assembly has virtually done what it's supposed to, to, to do in terms of provisions, because they did close by close uh, provision debate and analysis before they said, OK, this is almost a clean uh, paper. Now let's send it to various states so that every state assembly will now debate that. Mm. Recall that many state governments have pocketed the state assemblies. Recall that many state governments have pocketed local government administrations. And um, recall to before now, it's not the first time the National Assembly will do this kind of a, a, a bill thing sent to state assemblies. At the point they said, state assemblies, we hereby give you freedom. They said, no, we don't like Mr. it. Mr. Sherman, that, yes. is, that is one of the concerns with the state police. That is one of the things delaying the state police do. People are saying that the state governments will pocket the state police and will not uh, allow them to work. So there's that issue that needs to be addressed as well. Yes. So that even when you have them, they are able to perform effectively. I agree with you. But you see, let us borrow something from the APC convention that just took place. The law says either direct primary, indirect, or consensus. So when the governors were doing what was just not uh, okay, the president said, look, since you've been coming that I should provide solution, I hereby say consensus. Bring a unity list. Bring that. Let everybody sign. And people sign. Today they are asleep even though some people are not happy. But we've seen former IGs, IGPs, uh, saying that Nigeria is not yet ripe for state police. When will it be ripe? When they were IGs, this situation was not like that during their period. But when you say we are not ripe, why? A time has come. And I think that um, even when the president felt he, he should use executive order to even give this local government, the state governors were the ones who took the president to the court. And they went to the Supreme Court. Be, be, Supreme Court. You know, because uh, we we can continue to you know live in denial, and continue to look at maybe 1960 solutions to the problems of 2021. But as long as we continue to do that, all we will do is to pay lip service to the realities of our days, you know, today. And I, and I'm talking about the whole uh, state policing thing. Now, if you look at a state like Lagos, and how Lagos is partnering with the Nigerian police in you know, guaranteeing safety for Lagosians. It's something to emulate, isn't it? Exactly. So if we have an arrangement that you know, gives room for states to be able to manage, you know, have a structure of a policing structure that they can manage, uh, will we be still having some of these kind of conversations? Honestly, uh, in particular, the police in the 19 northern states, I mean the, the governors in the 19 northern states, they need to have everything when it comes to this uh, uh, community policing, state police. We should, you are, the states are the worst when it comes to uh, terrorism attacks. And I think that time has come. We need the very first step that will say, look, we are going to, uh, to, to, to approve this. Uh, state assembly, you have your independence. Local governments, you have your independence. Financial autonomy. Uh, so that you should be able to also have, even local governments, if you can have some agencies that are collecting rent, that are collecting all sorts of, uh, of things, market rates, why shouldn't that be when it comes to security? And they should bear in mind one thing. Those fine houses you are building at the state level, at the point you realize that men would disappear and just go to Europe. I was told a, a certain governor who was just stepping down, or, uh, who has just uh, uh, ended his tenure, uh, just that same day, he was already out, uh, going out of the country. Mm -hmm. Why are you in a haste? So let us put security, network, the architecture, redesign, ensure that everything works. Mm -hmm. Outside that, we Mr. shouldn't Shaman. just believe, yes. Mr. Shaman, every time there's an attack, we have these talks. 
we have this kind of talks that you're talking right now and we have it from the president and everyone this particular kaduna abuja train attack of monday is it grievous enough to cause action not just talk this time let me tell you if if some people are planning for wars the training to go for war is harder than the war because if you survive that training by the time you face you go to the, to, to, to the theater of war you realize that oh these are just boy scouts what am i trying to say if you do enough training right from your training school training colleges you realize that when you do deployments you look you smell you see you feel conflict you see the warning signals and you nip them in the board you don't even need to have them to now go and show your prowess you don't need to but when you do enough training with in, uh, enough uh, uh, intelligence gathering surveillance here and there using either the, the, the drones of course they have to be employed recent technology will have to be uh, employed and i mean some people pretend to be uh, hackers of, uh, 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 in the cyber world, some pretend to be Yahoo Yahoo boys, and with that, they are able to catch many of these people. Why are we not deploying that technology? And when we have trackers, so a -so person has been kidnapped, and you can see where they are, but it shouldn't be a period for uh, looking for money for the victim. Now, the kidnappers are looking for money from uh, the victim's uh, family, and uh, Agencies that are supposed to be tracking this are saying, look, we need this assistance again from the victim's family. It shouldn't just be. Let people just uh, know humanity. And I think that time has come that we just all have to have a rethink. This thing that constantly we rush to the mosque, rush to the church and all that and pray. Are there no things we should just do by ourselves so that uh, we leave God alone? Uh, truly, that, that we, we shouldn't just, you are under attack, you go and pray. You are under attack, you go and pray. Let the government also supply you with, with guns. You sub, or you supply the government, you work in tandem. And we, 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 we overcome all of these things. And like I said, once the president, look at the way the president is moving. He said, we want state police. The pre president has said so. But governors in the, the same party and opposed the, the, the are also opposing the president. The president was well, has the president ever been in support of state police? Absolutely, yes. I don't Even, think so. The, the last interview that the president had, we heard it all loud and clear that the president was never in support of state police. He uh, has advocated for the traditional system of handling security at the local level. He always referred governors who go to him you know, looking for assistance and support in terms of security to go back to traditional rulers. He has talked about these, uh, uh, what, the grazing routes, you know, going back to the grazing routes. We've given, given orders that uh, the attorney general should go back and find, you know, where those grazing routes have been encroached upon and then uh, bringing them back so that we can solve these issues, you know, of insecurity in the country. That has been the solution that the president has. Yeah, but you see, talking of grazing routes is a different ball game altogether uh, on this table. But in terms of state security or state police, I want to tell you that even the, uh, the vice president re-echoed some of these things. We we'll rock our brains, and I'm sure we'll, to bring out some things on the table here uh, some other days. But I want to tell you that the president at the point is also using what they call the, the, the executive order, of which the Supreme Court said, look, you cannot be a member of the executive and you bring a law and you are the one implementing. And that was how uh, the local government autonomy uh, suffered uh, at the at uh, Supreme Court. But I want to tell you that at the point they say security, Look, we also have to imbibe all of this. The president's thinking has been there, and he has said it, and even the vice president, like I said, once uh, said so. So if they said so at that level, we expect that the National Assembly, too, in terms of making a law, why don't you simply make this law and give the executive, let's see if the president will, will, will not sign this. It is your duty, it's your constitutional right to make the law. Why will you just say someone national uh, 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 say service chiefs and say, we give you this uh, order, go and do this. It's not their job, it's the order of the president to, to order deployments, mm -hmm. you know. But you can also uh, order the president to ensure that he orders the armed forces. So, But you can do that by making people friendly 
pro laws, pro people laws, who that will actually ensure that the situation of this nature or situations of this nature are, are corrected. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much uh, for coming on Daybreak this morning and sharing your perspectives with us. We have to end the review. Thank at you this for point. coming. Thank you, Stella. Yeah. Thank We've been you, speaking you. with the director of news, uh, Voice of Nigeria. But in a situation where you find that they must look at the situation. Not necessarily uh, tribal or regional.